The Thrivehood Podcast is a relevant life roadmap for boys and young men who want to thrive as they mature into manhood. I'll be your host, Tim Williams, and welcome to Thrivehood. It is the Thrivehood Podcast. I am your host, Tim Williams, or as I refer to myself on occasion, Uncle Tim. And you are listening to the Thrivehood Podcast, as I just said before. Why did I say it again? I don't know. But let's move forward. Hey, for a number of months now, I've been actually posting, um, I guess you would sort of call it a, a promotional cover for each individual podcast or each individual episode that I do. So, you know, if you see that, feel free if, to share that. Send that out to, to your friends and family and whoever else you think might be interested. Maybe there's a certain topic or a subject that comes up that you think someone would like or enjoy or would help be helpful to them. Man, I would love it if you would share that with them. And again, the Thrivehood podcast, the or I should say the website is thrivehoodpodcast.com, thrivehoodpodcast.com. So 10 things young men should know. This is volume two. I came out with one, uh, I don't know, it's been two or three, well, it's been longer than that. It's probably been a couple of months that I came out with my first installment. This will probably be a series. I knew when I did it, the first one, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, there's going to be quite a bit that these young men should know, which... So it goes right along with my podcast theme of helping you guys mature and grow. But these are more just kind of bullet points, in and out ideas and thoughts and suggestions. And I want to share those with you. So we want to do a round two. So let's dive in. So the first one, and this is in no particular order. The first one that I think would be valuable is negotiating and haggle skills, haggling skills. That's what they, another way, another way to say negotiating is to haggle. And depending upon where you are in the world, negotiating is either a part of everyday life or it's pretty much an uncomfortable practice, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, the truth is that, especially for us living in the West, you know, in the Western world, we don't always consider many of, you know, some of the commercial transactions that can be negotiated, but they can. Some of the obvious ones are you're negotiating for a for a car, you're negotiating for a house, you do a lot of that. But hotel rooms, rental cars, there are a number of other areas that you can actually do some negotiating in. You, you can even in some instances negotiate with insurance companies, your cell phone, your internet, Wi-Fi. There is actually a, a number of opportunities in which you can negotiate and learn that skill and to be able to haggle. And the reason isn't just because you want to be able to be good at negotiating. It's about good, getting a good deal, right? It's about getting the best deal that you can. So in initially, as you are beginning to learn this and try to hone this skill, it is going to be awkward and you're going to feel out of place. But you guys know this with practice and more practice comes more confident, more capability of being able to really deal in the art of negotiating. And ultimately the whole idea is to get a good deal. When you move up in the ranks in your career, there is more than enough room to negotiate all kinds of options and not just necessarily the, the amount of money you're going to make every year, but there are benefits galore as you continue to, again, rise up through the ranks of wherever you're heading for your career. You can negotiate all kinds of vacation time and pension and 401k, all this kind of stuff that's out there. There's a lot that you can negotiate and it would do you some good. So keep that in mind. Alrighty, onward and upward to number two, learning how to tie a necktie. You'll use this skill probably very seldom in your life. But man, I want to tell you, when you use it and when you need to use it, man, you want to look sharp, okay? Trust me, I have seen a number of young men, I, I say young men, I'm adults, that when they are going to a some type of event that calls for this, 
you're thinking that dude has never tied a necktie in his entire life and it shows so man you want to be good at that yeah you do it once or twice a year if even that man you got a style baby you got to look the part man i mean you got to be down with it man you know i mean you got to be looking good that's that's good it's good it's important right funerals weddings job interviews maybe charity events you know or maybe uh, up upscale sort of events things like that yeah you're going to be dressing to the nines how about prom although you probably won't be wearing it well you might be wearing a tie to prom that's a possibility so anyway number of reasons why you should learn to tie a necktie number three cpr you should definitely know how to perform cpr some emergency situations are so urgent guys that even if you call 911, by the time the paramedics arrive, it's too late. I mean, that's just reality. Believe it or not, about one quarter of Americans say they have been in a situation where a CPR was needed. They didn't say that they had the skills. They're just saying there was a situation where they needed it. Heart attacks, other scenarios where breathing becomes labored and there is an unresponsiveness going on. I know just recently we were watching, my family, we were watching a, a movie or not a movie. We were watching a series, something about real life emergency situations. And there was two buddies that were out in some, they were out in, in somewhere in Africa. I, I believe that's where they were at along some, one of these little rivers that run through Africa and they were kayaking down some of these rivers. And this one guy took a pretty steep, jump off of a waterfall and dude didn't come up you know, his kayak turned over his buddy raced out there and for about four minutes the guy was unresponsive and fortunately his buddy pulled him up performed cpr got him to sit up and saved his life his his buddy saved his life so you you just don't know when you're going to need that. And I think that's important. I think that's good. Saving someone's life. Think about that, man. That would be pretty awesome to put in your, in your history books of memories, right? Hey, I, you know, I did this, I did this. Oh yeah, I saved somebody's life. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. And also be aware that there is a new hands-only method, which can be used on teenagers and adults alike. It's something that's a little different I won't go into all the details. I do know that it has to do with you're not putting your mouth on mouth anymore. I know that much about it. And it's more just using compressions. So again, if you haven't done it, or maybe you've done CPR a class years ago, or even your parents or your guardians have done it, um, you might want to let them know too that it's not the same. The, the approach has changed a little bit over, over the years. So you're getting ready for that all important meeting or prom. How about that? or you're getting ready to go out on a date with your girlfriend, or you're gonna go meet your girlfriend's parents for the first time, okay? All kinds of scenarios where this could happen. You got your shirt on, you're ready to rock and roll, and a button comes off. Holy crap, what do I do now? Well, I know you guys would say, man, I just change shirts, <laughs> which is possibly true, but that wouldn't be helpful if you're already away from your home and you pop a button, how about learning how to sew on a button, right? I know it's, you're like, really, dude, you're talking about sewing on a button. Hey man, it's just a skill that you should learn. You wouldn't realize, and you wouldn't imagine the number of girls that would think that's actually kind of cool. Guy, this dude knows how to sew. At first they'd probably give you grief, but then in the back of their mind, they'd be like, this guy's like, he's just, uh, he's just like a all encompassing. He's like a Swiss army knife, right? He just can do it all. So I know while sewing seems to be more of in the ladies realm, just knowing how to fix simple clothing can really come in handy in case you're in a pinch. I think that would be worthy of that. Sharpening a knife from pocket knives to kitchen knives to survival knives. Make sure that you keep those blades nice and sharp. You wouldn't Imagine the number of times that my wife comes to me and says, all of my knives are dull. And so I get out the, well, I'll use a number of methods. I, I do have a sharpening stone and I have another couple other ways that I approach it. But one way or another, I actually sharpen those up and 
get her going again. And by the way, that saves a lot of money <laughs> because if you don't know how to sharpen, you're going to throw all these blades away. You're going to go get brand new knives and you're just, you know, flushing money down the toilet, so to speak. So keeping a blade sharp and knowing how to use it and being able to keep it in a place of usefulness for you. Very good. It's a good, good thing. I use knives all the time. I'm, I've got one in my truck. I've have one several around throughout my house. You just never know, man. It's just good. And there, I know this is going to sound corny. There's just something about sharpening a knife. I can't explain it. It's just something manly about it. It just, I don't know. It just, there's just good vibes that come from that. And I think it's important for you to, to learn how to do that. How to use a compass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Google Maps. I got turn-by-turn -turn directions. Well, what if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your phone is dead? All right, that's probably going to be a big challenge. Maybe you're out in the wilderness. You can't get a signal. In those type of situations, make sure you have a compass so that you have the ability to at least figure out which direction you need to go. So out of all of the skills... Out of all of the skills that I have learned over the years, this one is very empowering. I don't know. There's just something about knowing wh where I'm at, getting my bearings, being able to look at, uh, you know, even looking like at a, a topographical map and being able to identify the number of miles and where I'm at and looking at the sky and deciding you know which way are the clouds blowing and which way is the sun setting and there are a number of things that you can learn and be able to identify a little bit about where you are and mainly as we're talking here about a compass but I, I there's something empowering about that you 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 have a sense especially in a situation like that where you can say to yourself you know what the elements out here they don't they're not going to control me. I, I have a chance. And man, there's just something empowering and something hopeful. There's a hopefulness that comes when you can learn how to gauge where you are and sort of get your bearings in a situation where maybe you're unfamiliar with. So learn how to use a compass. I think that's important. Guys, you've just dropped one of the biggest dumps in history. <laughs> and you're proud of that and you feel better. And then you realize you've used almost half of the roll of toilet paper that's at your girlfriend's house in order to clean yourself up. And then what's even worse, you flush and it doesn't go down. Oh my God, <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> well, some clogs do take care of themselves after several flushes, but sometimes you're going to need more than just a hope and a prayer. You're going to need to learn how to unclog a toilet. <laughs> so you need to know how to do that. You need to find out some of the basics and the fundamentals, just how to use a plunger and how to find a way to shamelessly get that clog out of the toilet so that you can, you can save your credibility and who you are for another day, <laughs> say the least. Basically how to unclog a toilet. I will let you know this, something I didn't know until recently. When you have a plunger, now I'm being serious, and you actually push into the toilet, they actually say you're not trying to push hard in and then slowly pull out. You actually push in slow and hold it there a second and pull towards you quickly and up fast. It's the opposite of what I was always taught. And they're saying they're, you're actually trying to pull the clog up so that it actually has the ability to go back down better. Let's move on because what a disgusting topic. Pun intended, I, sh I shall say. Practicing situational awareness. There is always the possibility that we're going to face a threat. There's always the possibility that our safety is going to be in danger, whether it's an active shooter a deranged coworker, an irritated driver, you know, oftentimes we don't really notice that. We don't notice the threat until it's too late, until there is something that's really out of balance. And we're sort of, I don't know how you'd say that, engrossed in our own headspace, maybe is a way to say that. I think it's very, very important to be aware of your surroundings 
where are you? Where could threats come from? What's when the, whatever the situation it is, it's it's and it's not all encompassing your life, but just being aware. In the tactical world, it's often said the best way to win a fight is to avoid a fight, right? And to do that, you need to develop situational awareness. And this isn't just knowing what's going on around you. It also means having a plan and knowing what to do when you notice something is going awry, of being able to be aware. You're getting on a bus. Is there an exit in the back? Who's all on the bus? At a moment's notice, how many men and how many women are on here? Does anybody look you know, like there's something going on, you know, there, there's just a lot there that you can gauge. You're, you're walking with your girlfriend, you know, down a street, you know, what, what's going on here? What are we, what are we walking into? Just being aware. It's as simple as that. Again, it's not something that should in, in, invade your entire mindset, but it's just being aware, walking to a car, just noticing the car, you know, maybe trying to look underneath the car, and just taking a quick look before you get in. Is there anybody in the back seat? There's, there's all kinds of moments in, in circumstances and situations where that would be important. Nine, number nine is driving in the snow. I know for some of you, if you're listening to this in the Florida Keys, you're going to be saying, this doesn't matter to me. And hey, if you never go north of the Mason-Dixon line and that's going to be your life, fine. There's no problem. But it would be good if you had some general knowledge and understanding of how to drive in the snow. Trust me, as I live in Middle Tennessee, uh, sometimes the things that people do in, in Tennessee just uh, get under my skin. But again, you just need to learn how to, to drive in that. Just you know, remember, slow and steady wins the race. You're not always trying to race through it. Although I will say if you're going up a hill, Actually, it is good to get a little bit of a of a, a push, a little bit of speed, because it also will help propel you up the hill, even though you may not be uh, pushing on the gas a lot. That's just one tidbit I can suggest. And then finally, and lastly, writing in cursive. We are teaching our kids, our son and our daughter, about writing in cursive. I know in the age of texting and emails, you know, everything sort of looks the same. Well, Writing in cursive sets you apart from the crowd. Writing a handwritten letter every now and then to somebody sets you apart. It breaks sort of the, the mundane. And I know that sounds silly, but you know, it, it, it adds a little bit of class. It adds personality. And again, as I said, it does set you apart. And by the way, use this method as a follow-up to an interview, whether you do a face-to-face -face or an online Zoom interview, that you're wanting to set yourself apart, use this. Write a very classy, cursive little thank you note to the interviewer, the manager, whoever you interviewed. That will set you apart, guaranteed. Well, there you go. There's 10 more suggestions of some things that I would say you should know and learn and be able to practice. And until next time, guys, stay, stay, stay strong. See you later.